everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the shop. Welcome to the Two Stroke Turbo Channel. That's my camera shy dog named Stella. She's going to go take a nap in one of those cars over there. What are we working on the shop today? You guys love my uh, shop critiquing and looking at odd things on odd on sometimes normal cars, but sometimes odd cars. I I delve into the oddities and I like to uh, remark and highlight some of the weird things that I find. This is a common automobile, at least here in the United States. This is a 19, I'm sorry, this is a 2002 Honda Odyssey minivan. We have one like this. It's not the same color, it's not the same van, but we have one like this and we love it. It's great for families, great for doing all kinds of stuff. And this car came in because the customer was like, I hear a weird noise in my brakes, kind of a scratching noise. So I thought, well, that's interesting. Let's take a look at it. So I'm gonna turn the flash on here, or my light. Uh, we have uh, rear disc brakes here. And I'll show you what I mean by that. This rear disc brake goes on that hub just like that. And you have the disc up here where my, my fingers are. And you can see it's really rusted. These are really rusted rear rotors. Four R's, try to say that five times fast. And inside you have the e-brake mechanism. When you pull on the cable, you spread these shoes and that corresponds to the inside of this, basically a drum. You can see the rust has really occluded the uh, pad area. When you have a brake pad such as this, it's very wide, you can see the rusty area right there is causing a grinding noise. There's so many pits and unsmooth areas in that rusted rotor that this pad doesn't have a smooth surface to ride on. This is unusual for us to see here in the Pacific Northwest. We don't have rusty cars so much. Let me go to the other side. So I've got the rear rotor on this side exposed as well. And a couple of issues, <laughs> same thing. So we've got the, the brake pad and when I pulled the pad off, this is the first time in my whole life as a mechanic that I've seen this. The brake pad has detached from the backing plate and because of the rust and it was still held in place. It didn't kick out, but the customer was complaining of a bunch of noise. So the noise either could have been this pad rattling around or grinding on the rust and or the backing plate is completely knackered and broken. So there's a lot going on here. Um, also, I had to use my map torch to get these unseized. Uh, so rust, man, rust is a bad thing. Uh, this car doesn't look rusty. I just assumed that it's a typical Portland or Oregon car, which we don't salt our roads and we don't have rust problems, but apparently sometime in this life, this car lived someplace else. But that's a new one on me, seeing a, a pad break like that. Uh, I have yet to see that, but had I not been diligent in my checking and pulling this all apart to look at, the, I wanted to look at the e-brake shoes in here to see if um, there's an issue. It seems like it spins good one way and then it didn't the other. So I think something's in there. So I'm gonna pull that apart and take a look, but you can't be too careful when inspecting brakes. So I'm gonna pop this off and see what I find in there. Okay, so we have the driver's side rear brake disc off. We have a broken backing plate. I'm gonna see if I can clean that up a little bit. Maybe just put a little tiny weld there. And I was afraid I would find something in here. This seemed odd to me. I don't know if the e-brake is too tight or what, but the only thing I found in there was the inspection cover. Nothing else. Everything else looks good. You can see the roughness of the rotor and the pad that had broken, it probably broke due to vibration, I guess. Look at the thickness of the pad compared to the stopping ability of that rotor. That's not great. It's only like half. So we're gonna fix that. Some new rotors, some new pads, fixes uh, girdle so those sliders work. Fix that. Put this guy back on the road. Okay, so we whipped out my 110 non-gas Lincoln Goober welder is what I called it. 
or what I've called it, I very rarely use this machine anymore because it doesn't have gas. And I put a couple quick little goober welds on there. Solid as a rock. No more flapping around. Gee, it sounds a little flappy over here. Maybe I should put another weld over here. Uh, but that's much better. So we'll take care of that and we'll wait for the parts to come in. So while we're waiting for the rear brake parts to appear from the local parts supplier, I know these Honda Odysseys very well. My wife drive one, drives one and I uh, maintained it for many years. Same model or roughly. Uh, you see up here in Oregon, we have a lot of pine trees. Uh, we have a lot of organic debris that builds up at the, usually the roof or the windshield that slides down and it clogs up the air vents for breathing air. This is where the air gets pulled in. I think the fan is actually over here. Uh, but these get clogged with uh, pine needles and rose petals and uh, everything. Twigs, squirrels, leave nuts. I've seen, I've seen everything. But when I see that, I know that the cabin air filter within the car is probably clogged. Now on a Honda Odyssey, especially these early ones, they don't make it easy. They have a bracket. Oh, let's see, turn the radio off behind the glove box. I'm gonna pull the glove box out and I'll show you. You actually have to use a saw and saw a couple brackets to get the cabin filter off. And because of that, nobody ever changes that obstacle creates impediment in service. Nobody ever wants to change the cabin filter. I bet you this thing has a nasty cabin filter. I would be shocked if it's been replaced. So we're going to replace it and see. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's replace that cabin filter that's probably never been replaced. I'm going to pop out the plastic thing on the side there. Let everything in the glove box fall on the floor. And yes, you can tell the cabin air filter is in this slot right here, which is vertical up and down. And the bar, which is right here, has never been cut. You're supposed to unbolt it from that side or that side. The only way you can get this cabin filter out is to undo that bar and it's never been tampered with that I can tell. So I'm betting that's going to be an award-winning chock full of yard debris cabin filter. Let's get to it. Okay, so once you get the bar out of the way, then you have access a little bit to the door. And, oh yeah, it's completely full. Look at all the debris that's falling down. This is your filter. Uh, you gotta cut this. Okay, so we got our plastic cut. We did not cut the bar, the metal structure, and we can fix the plastic once we get the filter out. It's original. I suspect it would be. Oh, uh, yeah, it's not as bad as I thought. But it's... It's completely plugged. And the box, we can vacuum that. Oh, part of the... This thing there, you can't really see in there. <clears throat> There's a seal that goes around the outside of the filter. There's a new filter, for example, you can see the seal. That seal is all stuck in the box. We got to vacuum and clean all that out of there. See, it's plugging up the core. Okay, so we spent a good 10 minutes with our friendly shop vac. You got to be very careful when you use a tool like a screwdriver to get in there to clean out all the debris that you don't poke that core. If you poke that core, you're in for big trouble. But the air conditioning drain is at the bottom and it was completely clogged full of the foam that surrounds the filter. So we got that all cleared up. We're gonna put the new filter in, put it back together. Well, I do like surprises. This Honda Odyssey is full of surprises. So we did the rear brakes. We found some abnormalities, abnormal, abnormalities with the rear brakes. And with the front ones, check this out. I thought I'd pull the wheels off, just take a look. I can see the pads right through there. It looks like there's lots of meat, especially on this pad right here. But get this, you can see back in here, that rotor is completely wiped on the inside. There's nothing left. That pad is knackered and that's because the caliper is stuck. So that's a bummer. I didn't expect that. 
but we gotta fix it. So let's take a look at the surprise Odyssey. Let's pull this off. Right there. Aha! There's nothing on that page. Oh my gosh, nothing. Here I told the customer the only problem was his rear brakes. Oh boy. Bad on my part, there's nothing left. I can't get to that right now with my fingers. Let's try this again. Oh yeah. That's all ground down. There's nothing left of this pad. Okay, and the last thing to do on this Surprise Odyssey is to buff our headlights. We're going to take our really hazed over, glazed, looks like cataracts on our headlights and make them bright and shiny like this one. You're going to love that. Okay, and Stella is looking longingly at the car we fixed today. That's the old 2002 Honda Odyssey back out in the wild without grinding brakes and headlights you can see from, fresh air you can breathe in the cabin. What more could you want? These are good old cars. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video. Hope you learned something. Hope you liked it. Give me a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I never say that, but I thought I would just this time. Still, tell the people out there what you think. What do you think? Hmm? <laughs>